Welcome to In the Green Room. I'm Kinga. And I'm Chet. I'm Richard. I'm Christopher. We are so excited to have the chef, Christopher Gross. Uh, we love his food and so excited to hear your story. Um, tell us how you got started and what we're going to eat today. And Okay, well, uh, I got started here. My uh, mom moved here when I was 12 and um, really didn't have any money. And the next door neighbors all raced motocross. The kids did. So <laughs> okay. I wanted a bike. I had no passion for food at all. Zero. As a matter at fact, 12. I didn't even like food. I ate everything plain, no condiments. It was scary going to anyone's <laughs> house because I didn't know what they were going to put on the food. But uh, we didn't have any money, so I had to get a job. And, you know, uh, I think my first job was in uh, food related, 31 flavors on Camelback oh. and Simple. Oh, I know exactly and, the place. Okay. Uh, and then I, I think I moved up one summer. I worked at Jack in the Box. I was basically a janitor. <laughs> and I uh, got my big break to uh, work at John's Green Gables, not far from where we're at right now. John's? Uh, it was sort of the... What was that? I don't know It was know the that place. steakhouse of its time. Oh, really? Okay, so it's like been, what decade? A decade. Yeah. A uh, long, long time ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in another world. He doesn't uh, want to divulge that. I don't want to divulge my age. No, it was in the 70s. It was in the 70s. And it was like mm -hmm. the place. But, wow. you know, it's just to make money. And, and you were uh, 15 or so? Uh, I started when I was 12. Working so, in, okay. you know, working. Uh, prior to that, I was a paper boy in a little town in the Midwest. But uh, so, you know, it uh, it paid for the motorcycle loans that I, so I could go racing. Okay. Uh, never was super successful because I had more of a fear for life than pressing <laughs> it to the edge. But, uh, was your mom a good cook? No, terrible. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, her her idea of a great food or something was uh, Velveeta in a crock pot mm -hmm. with a, a jar of paste in it for dipping <laughs> sauce. But, um, you know, I was, you know, racing motocross. I think I was on my fifth bike, you know, and the deal was uh, uh, if I missed a payment, you know, the bike went right back to the dealership because she didn't have the money, you know, didn't make a lot of money. And, um, I've got a job in the Adams Hotel. They blew this oh, the Adams hotel, hotel up. Yes. Oh. And then they I rebuilt it. Yeah. And it was they rebuilt it so good, uh, mm -hmm. so far ahead of its time. It went chapter eleven in like eleven months. But uh, it had a great crew there and that's really where I found the passion for cooking. And at the it, Adams Hotel. At the Adams Hotel. Mm. Wow. So um, when it, you know, was in chapter eleven, everyone dispersed all the great chefs dispersed to uh, Southern California, and one of them said, "If you want to continue to learn, you should go to LA." So, I went to LA, and eventually ended up. How old were you at that time? Nine, nineteen. Okay, so at nineteen, you went uh, on this mission to go learn how to be a chef. So I moved to Los Angeles, and uh, ended up um, eventually at the Century Plaza Hotel, which was a stellar hotel, um, a great there a big apprenticeship program mm. uh, so this I, is truly a rags to riches story because well, I mean you came from poverty and yeah. working your way up and he was working as a janitor at Jack in the Box <laughs> <Yeah. but laughs> I don't think there's much worse <laughs> place to start <laughs> yeah well, and that's why I got my it's the graveyard <laughs> shift yeah they're open all night so I, think I, I, I got my first critique <laughs> I like made three hamburgers or something for these kids you know after a party probably from high school uh -huh. they were seniors and uh, I served it to them, and they came back around the thing, and I opened the door and go, yeah, did I forget something they threw them at me? I burnt the hell out of them. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> My first food critic. Uh -huh. uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I, you know, found a passion for cooking, and uh, uh, really, if my mom had not moved to, to Arizona, and we stayed in Trenton, I'd, I made a joke with her uh, that I probably have my head down on a bar with a cigarette burning between my fingers at you know, one o'clock in the morning with an empty whiskey bottle and my oh, paper yes. sack, you know, on yes. the floor. Because I don't know where I would have gone, you know, in, in Trenton. It was like a little town of 5,000 people. Not exciting. Mm -hmm. What made her move to Arizona? Uh, just, you know, she wasn't in a good relationship with my father. So it was a good thing? Oh, it's, it, was, it was a good thing for her. It was unbelievable thing for me well, probably saved both our lives well congrats to this let's cheers we're cheersing to um christopher gross's life and his success with food and yeah, 
And we have, what are we drinking, Richard Betts? So we are drinking Sam Pillsbury's Malvasia, Malvasia Bianco, which is a, uh, is, a, is a grape originally from Greece that you will find in Northern Italy. Um, it's considered one of the aromatics. Certain grapes are half aromatic, but could you can, I mean, the aroma is quite aromatic, mm -hmm. flowery, mm. and um, it's a beautiful grape. And this is a grape that, that has really, so many grapes have, have uh, been introduced here in Arizona and, and are, are thriving. And this is one that is, has kind of taken on the, the mantle of, of the white wine grape you know, kind of represents Arizona. And uh, I, I love the Malvasias. It's an interesting grape. Actually, it, it's, it's as... Well, here's Sam. Here's Sam hey, Pillsbury. Sam. We're uh, just talking about you. We're talking about you. We're here with Christopher Gross, and uh, we're my, drinking... My, my, my ears are ringing. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about this Malvasia we're drinking. Um, well, Malvasia Bianca is, is an Italian aromatic we think it originated in Greece. Um, oh. It flourishes in the south of Italy and Sicily. It actually likes sandy soil and, and a lot of sun, and it really flourishes in in um, in Arizona now. Yes. Like all of our wines, it's uh, wild yeast fermented, in barrel, stainless steel and neutral oak, uh, bone dry, and um, and aged about nine months, and then and then was just bottled. Um, that, Malvasia Bianca made by us is the two previous years as one best of class and the biggest, most most uh, respected wine competition in the country with 7,000 entries, the San Francisco Chronicle. And it's what I call a dry aromatic. It's made to go with food. Uh, we pick the, the food a little earlier than most people. We don't go for food farms. We go for complexity and nuance and fragrance. And uh, it's it, it'll taste like it has a little bit of residual sugar, but it's, it's bone dry. So Christopher, what do you think? Oh, it's a wonderful one. I think it would go great with a smoked salmon. Okay, so we're about to try some smoked salmon. How do you think that pairs, Sam? I'm sorry, say again? We're about to try some food that Christopher prepared, some smoked salmon. Do you think that's Ooh, a good pairing? Actually, the um, I love the Chardonnay with salmon, but um, give it a try, see what it feels like. Oh, I wish I was there. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. next time. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, call me, call me back at any time. I can tell you more about the wine. Well, we'll okay. call you back about the next wine. Okay, honey, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. There you go. So, what are we eating here? Um, so, so, this is some, um, some house-smoked salmon. Okay. Uh, find some room there. So, we uh, we cure that for 24 hours. Some little plates here. Between oh, we have little plates? Okay, great. And, um, thank you. I just threw some salad there. That's perfect. I was running out the door with this stuff. And just a little lemon on it should be fantastic. But uh, we take a wild caught salmon, we cure it for 24 hours, and then we gently smoke it when for another 24 it, hours. Just the salt, salt and sugar, yeah, yeah. peppercorns, uh -huh. okay. and uh, basic. And then it's a slow neutral wood that we smoke it with. Yeah. And uh, it's lined up in a, a line on a large pan about two and a half, two feet by three feet. And we make like a little fuse, so it just smolders for 24 hours, wow. and uh, gives a soft, uh, nice subtle smoke to it. I'm gonna pass it over to you too, Richard. Any more plates? You can have that one. You can have the. Oh, have that I was one. gonna ask, uh, what's your favorite dish that you ever made on a menu? That's like, a great. What would you well, say a, your magnum opus well, is a, as a chef? Gosh, I mean that would be like. That's that's tough. I I pretty much like a lot of everything. Can you put I, some on here for Alan? I think there's a couple of dishes though that a friend of mine said was a that's a modern day classic and it was in a, a book with a lot of famous chefs all over the world. It was and it's uh, we still serve it on our classic menu, uh, ABC of foie gras. So it's the three mm. qualities of foie gras, uh, super tasty, and uh, this is delicious. Uh, wow. Yeah. And the, the wow. flattering thing is wow. when you see something duplicated, when mm. someone else duplicates it, but it's appeared on other menus. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Our Parnassian de Mousse au Chocolat. It's a chocolate tower. Mm. Um, yep. Yep. That's uh, appeared in lots of books. It's been, you've see, I've seen it on other menus. I actually got on. Uh, so does that mean you created it yeah. and then somebody else? Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that happens. It's flattering when that happens. So. There's modern day classics like uh, 
uh, decades ago, the Twago brothers produced the uh, salmon or uh, ozai, a sorrel salmon, uh, salmon and sorrel sauce. And that went to so many restaurants around the world because mm. it was so famous to where the son now, who has the three-star Michelin restaurant in France, says, I will never cook another one of those again. <laughs> Wow, you know, that's it incredible. Is, it, it, it became that popular that now he doesn't even like it. I, you know, I've done it too many times. Probably like a rock star. Like, do I have to really sing that song? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's where I think like the people that want to hear that song do it for them. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. So, so, question: If you create this amazing dessert or this amazing entree, and you're the first to do it, how do how do you? Uh, Trademark that. Oh, you can't. You can't. There's been lots of famous, mm -hmm. really ultra yeah. famous chefs that uh, tried to trademark things. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you just change a little bit. But, but, but I don't think it's possible. So, I mean, do you take pictures of it, a video, mm -hmm. and and document? Uh, oh, you created this dish little, tonight. Just a little twist in something, and it becomes something different. Mm -hmm. And you know, you take uh, anyone who actually makes it from the recipe, it'll be different. Uh, I used to joke with uh, someone about, you know, talking about recipes. If it was that easy to do, you'd just have to figure out what kind of restaurant do I want to open. Do I want to open a Thomas Keller French Laundry? I'll just go <laughs> buy the cookbook. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not that easy. It is not that you easy. Know, so. It's really hard following directions on it. If it was, we'd have a lot of great restaurants everywhere. That's true. Now, I do think Arizona has a lot of great yeah, restaurants. Yeah, we do. We absolutely do. I feel like Certainly I've been all over the world. Than, than what I mean here in 1994. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Certainly. And yours in particular. So how long have you owned restaurants? Uh, like from what age? I think the first restaurant I really took over and uh, mm -hmm. the owner gave me 20, I always joke, he gave me great opportunity. He gave me 25% of the air in the building. Uh, <laughs> wow. We, we weren't a restaurant that ever made money. Uh, what was, was that first restaurant called? Uh, Le Relais. Was, was that here in Phoenix? Yeah, that was in North Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Nelson came out here with his wife and they bought uh, 100,000 acres in North Scottsdale. Wow. And then they found water and didn't tell anyone and they bought another 100,000 acres. And that became, and then they sold the water rights, I believe, as the wow. story goes, to the city of Scottsdale hmm. to become incorporated in Scottsdale. And uh, that's where you find Troon. Uh, out there, mm -hmm. and then Pinnacle Peak, Desert Highlands. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I he that. created all of that out there. Wow, that's um, amazing. So, but he, he wanted a, a little restaurant, we're like a lost leader, so when he brought all these big people up to buy the land, uh, was, we have a good, great place for you to dine. Nice. He had a steakhouse, he had Le Relais, us, he had a general store, he had one apartment, so he could, could think so he could control all the zoning. Interesting. So Laura Lay was French cuisine. Laura Lay uh, was. How are you uh, saying that? Laura Lee? No, Laura uh, Lay. Relay. Um, Laura Relay. And um, yeah, it was a small French restaurant. So you own part of that? Uh, he gave me 25% of the, when you don't make any money, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. you hope you don't own part of the debt as yeah. well. Yeah, right. So 25% uh, of those, any profit or anything like that. and. Um, back in, what was it, 88 when the developers got uh, in trouble, when we had a, you know, yeah, it, everything yeah. crashed. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He uh, was trying to sell the name and uh, he goes, you'll, you'll have 25%. Once I get paid, I'll get, give you the other 25%. But I didn't want to go with uh, uh, some people I didn't know. So I didn't do that. And the restaurant was going to stay open. Was that a good decision? Oh yeah, it was a great decision. Okay. The restaurant was going to stay open, um, but I'd already found uh, some investors to open up uh, in, we eventually opened up in uh, the beginning of 1990. That was Christopher's and Christopher's Bistro, a dual concept of a big restaurant. I would go there all the time. Yeah. That's the one that yes. came back in 24th Street, mm -hmm. right? That's the one I remember yeah. first. Yeah, and we had a little fine dining restaurant, and yeah. you know they mm -hmm. played off of each other. The the small one was the very expensive one mm -hmm. to run, but uh, you know we'd buy great product, and there'd always be stuff that we could sell in the bistro. It worked together, and uh, I think we we originally opened up with like a hundred wines by the glass. We were the wow uh, first that's, right. uh, that's yeah. incredible yeah. first I real now. Yeah. wine bar, uh, and really, I think one thing we did we changed the scene and. 
in Arizona or Phoenix because every list probably had four wines on it by the glass, maybe. Yeah. And we had a hundred and we were introducing people to everything That's but amazing. Chardonnay and Cabernet. Mm -hmm. To Malvasia, you know, we were like the 31 flavors of wine. Maybe mm -hmm. I did get something from working there. <laughs> we would actually give you, instead of a spoon, we would give you a, a small taste of anything you wanted. Great. So, I totally remember that. I, I remember one of your restaurants had this, in the bar, this beautiful picture of this lady with legs. Oh, no, that was that was Christopher's and Crush. That was yes. three yeah. restaurants yes. later. That's three yes, yes. That's three restaurants later. My question, Christopher, is w back in that, at that time, was it di difficult to, to find the, the variety of wines that you, that you wanted here? That's a great no. question. Well, yeah. can you pass the wine, please? Not, not really. Uh, it's just people weren't bringing them in. So yeah. we had a relationship, and my general manager that I hired, Stephen Olson, who's brilliant, uh, killing it in New York. Uh, we had relationships with Kermit Lynch okay, and so Seagram's Chateau Estates, who owned the world back right. then, and they would bring all this stuff in for us. And then good. So we you were, weren't relying on local distributors. You were going right to the no, source. No, we were going to the source. Too. Right. And did you have a wine buyer who was doing the wine buy? It was uh, Stephen Olson and myself yeah. for okay. the cool. first two years. Wow. Okay. Um, and we would bring it in, and then the thing, because we allowed you to taste, you know, customers go like, you know, I've never heard of that before. Well, yeah. here, have a taste. Yeah. And, well, I'll have it. And then they were end up going to another wine shop that was here in, in Times Sportsman, yep. and going like, we had this, we had this, can you get it? And so they would start to buy the I wines. Remember it well. yeah. And then Paul Fleming opened up like a year later, and yep. He had a hundred wines by the glass. Yeah. So we, we opened the market for a lot of product that You're the was never here. That's so cool. And that's probably important. influenced them. And then it was, it was that restaurant that when you got the James Beard Award, right? Uh, that is correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then the other restaurant, Le Relais, which was kind of interesting when I knew I was leaving, mm -hmm. um, prior to that, and when I knew we were closing the restaurant and I was at another adventure, but I wasn't sure. Um, I had a friend of mine who was the executive sous chef at the Fairmont, what, what's mm -hmm. now the Fairmont. Princess. And, yeah. yeah, and he goes, he goes, how did you like, uh, how did the, the two people like dinner last night? And I go, what two people? And he goes, uh, they were from Food and Wine Magazine. And I go, <laughs> you knew someone was from Food and Wine Magazine and you didn't tell me there? Oh, I just thought you knew. And I'm like, <laughs> probably saying a few things like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> that, you know. Thanks I got, for the heads up. Yeah, <laughs> I got you your job here. You didn't tell me these people were here. And so I kind of, he told me their names and I'm start going through the tickets. And I go, yeah, that was a solid dish. That's a solid dish. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. And then I knew one of the writers, uh, for Food and Wine Magazine. I'd met him a year before. So I said, I'm just going to call him up and uh, fish around. I call up and hey, how are you doing? I think I'm coming back to New York to visit. I don't know if you want to have a drink or talk. I wasn't going. <laughs> you know, I was like listening on the phone, like, you know, hopefully, hear, yeah, yeah, my editor was there and he had a great time, but he didn't say anything. And I go, well, well okay, well, I might see you, you know, next month. Though. He goes, yeah, yeah, well, all right, bye. And then it's like, huh, so I wonder how it was. And then like three weeks later or a month later, I get this envelope, uh, FedEx from Food and Wine Magazines, open it up, says highly confidential, don't say anything till we announce it. <gasps> You've been selected top 10 new chef for Food and Wine Magazine. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. 89, yeah. you know, and I go, wow. Oh, yeah. So I call up and he goes, yeah, yeah, I couldn't tell you anything. <laughs> goes, don't say anything. <laughs> so I go, it's a big deal. Well, and then I'm nervous, like, is this a chef award or is this for the, the restaurant? And he goes, why? And I go, I might not be at this restaurant, <laughs> you know. And he goes, <laughs> oh, no, it's a chef award, it's yours. And I go, but he goes, we'd like to know where you're going. So I immediately took out a phone number to a restaurant that didn't exist yet, and then was banking on uh, or gambling on that it will open at 24th Street in Camelback and be called Christopher's and Christopher's Bistro. And it, and it did, so we got into the publication actually before the restaurant opened. Wow, that's and, incredible. Uh, that's incredible, like manifesting that goal of creating the restaurant. You literally yeah. put the information in before you had it set in yeah. stone. So that's brilliant. So, so that therefore when they did the that's article, cool it said story. Christopher's. It, it yeah. helped launch wow. Christopher's and then something else really wow. strange happened after about, I don't know, we were open a month. So both restaurants were now open uh, in the same space. You wouldn't know one existed 
uh, being in the other one, the way we had set up two separate entrances, mm -hmm. you couldn't mm -hmm. walk through from one side to the other, central kitchen, uh, one being a big open kitchen. And um, there was uh, someone in, no, we were super busy and like I'm looking out into the open kitchen, you know, into the dining room, and I'm mm -hmm. seeing people I recognize, people from New York. <laughs> and there was an individual, Clark Wolf, and I go like, what the hell is he doing in town? You know, and we're just like really busy, I'm happy. And I go out and I go like, what are you doing here? And he goes, I didn't know you are here. And I go, okay, but what are you doing here? And he goes, we're here for the Betty Crocker cook-off. <gasps> Or something what? like that. And I go, what? at the Buttes Hotel. And I go, okay, what's that? And he goes, every food writer has been invited. Every magazine wow. editor has been invited to this. And they're here. And I, he goes, you, it's over on the other side. You have the person, I don't think the magazine's there, Red Book or something like that. You have Cosmopolitan mm -hmm. eating with you tomorrow night. You have Dorothy Hamlin, here, you know, and wow. all these names. And I'm like, and he goes, at the end of the table, that's the head of uh, uh, Departures. Wow. And that's his wife who edited the, the Lulu's the Gastronomy. And I'm like, Phil. And I'm kind of like, holy sh, you know. Yeah. And uh, go back to the kitchen, start screaming at everyone like, hey, you better be on the point. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. This is such yeah. a, this is and like a, such an exciting story of how. So this went on for how many nights? This went on for three nights. Three nights. And, That's so um, cool. It, uh, everyone was super happy and then after that we got uh, top 10 new restaurant Esquire magazine yeah we and what had, year was this uh, this was 1990. 90, yeah. 1990 and we were in so many publications and uh i don't know if you remember just, but my his dad uh very you look a lot like your dad um we were married in 89 and we came to your restaurant oh. all the time and a lot with his grandparents too. Oh. So that was like our restaurant that we went to. Yeah. Well, it, 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 I mean, it was it was uh, it was a great restaurant. I think it was a, <clears throat> a, a different concept. Mm -hmm. You know, having the bistro and then having the fine dining. Yeah. And then when I was looking to do something, that was the concept because really Phoenix wasn't really ready mm -hmm. to support a very ex a super expensive restaurant mm -hmm. um, and a big restaurant. So I scaled one down to like only forty seats. And the other one had over 200 seats, so um, it worked. They fed off of each other. So, and then, did you find your staff was very reliable? How did you hire yeah. your people? Well, I had a, a brilliant general manager, Stephen Stephen Olson. Mm -hmm. um, he was with me and helped launch the place for almost two years. He went off to uh, open a restaurant in uh, like a bed and breakfast. Uh, uh, and he was there for a year, and then he went to work for Danny Meyer oh. to open one of his restaurants. Oh. And then Steve got off into doing wine consulting, and then uh, I think his web handle is winegeek.com, mm. and then he became a, a mixologist specialist. Uh, he's hosted so many award shows. Mm. Uh, he's a sake master. He represents wineries in South America, in, wow. in France, uh, journalist. Uh, consultant i mean he's just all over the place everywhere impressive so is that uh christopher's restaurant your favorite restaurant you ever opened do you think or no the one definitely now is uh that one was uh, sure. you know i was uh, you know much younger um i was uh i said we're not going to talk personal but i was going through a little my, bit we, my first to. divorce <laughs> and so after my first divorce really after the first year of opening and it, it was such a phenomenal restaurant. How many divorces have we had? Let's see, let me think. Uh, no, no, just two. How many? Just two. two. Oh, just I'm two. I'm good okay. for uh, 10 years each time, like a long lease with a <laughs> low residual when you kick me to the curb. Um, so but, we, we had 10 years, 10 years, and now? Yep. Okay. So um, anyway, uh, so it was a fun restaurant to run. Uh, I was only really cared about the, the food and the service. I wasn't looking at the financials. And the financials really weren't really fantastic. I don't know where the money was going. Um, Who was doing the financials? It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, okay, one of the exes. Okay, it's okay. Uh, no, 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 not an ex. Uh, okay, okay. It was just that I was the minority partner. Um, oh, okay. 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 I was I was lucky to set it up. I don't know how. I had a a moment of brilliance, but you know, my I had an employment agreement that if I was fired in the first year. Um, I got nothing. If I made it the first year, I got to keep my percentage of 
the ownership of this stock. I could never be diluted, and the, the other partners would have first right of refusal, but I could sell it to anyone if they didn't want to pay for it, and they would have to buy me out. So I was pr protected when the- It sounds like everything you've done is so brilliant. I mean, from your whole story is just well, so incredible. And now to be up at the Wrigley Mansion, the premier yeah. top property in all of Arizona. I mean, that's, I think that that's the finest, most beautiful property well, that's, with the best view of the whole entire city. Well, that's this that's that's is the restaurant now. It is. But this one, you know, going through the first divorce and then when I was single, I probably played a lot. So the restaurant was a good. Uh, you were uh, big, the, the big playboy. Yeah, I didn't have to. I didn't have to go anywhere to meet people. They were all coming <laughs> to me, <laughs> <laughs> and I never really had to pay for a drink to buy them a drink. <laughs> And what year did the did Christopher's uh, close? Uh, I left in '97. Okay. And I think it continued for like six or eight months. Did, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, then we got uh, we did a project with Lessing Stern, an unbelievably nice, nice guy. Uh, they had all the hops breweries. Oh sure. And bistros, and they owned mm -hmm. Deer Valley Ski Lodge. And um, you know, he said, "Hey, you want to take over hops in the the Biltmore?" Uh, you can do anything you want with it, do your concept, and we'll make you a... In the Biltmore Shopping Center? Uh -huh. That's then okay, yeah, yep. but the next one. Yeah. And they go, uh, you know, we'll give you 49% ownership, and I said, I'll do it for 50. And they got that all cleared, and then... Uh, You're smart, I'll do yeah. it for 50, Yeah, I went to control, you know, I'm, I, I was sort of the, the, the operator, so it's even harder to... Get rid of me, <laughs> I uh, guess. I well, know. so that's hard. If it's fifty percent, then nobody's really the boss. Yeah, you have to have an arbitrator, and then since you're mm -hmm. the operator, and mm -hmm. they're not, and but they were they were wonderful. They wanted mm -hmm. to get out of the business. His company um, wanted to get out of the business because the other restaurants weren't doing well, and they said they don't didn't really like the liability of a restaurant. Didn't and, they have one at the uh, Fashion Square? Yeah. We would go there all the time. And then, yeah, hot brewery. And, uh, it's a good restaurant. Oh no, it was, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But uh, the 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 board, his board, said we don't like the liability of a of a of restaurants. And I'm like going, you have a, a ski lodge, it's just a ski resort. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, I guess it's different. And uh, so uh, they said we want to buy you out. And I go, no, I'm I'm, I'm staying. I don't mm -hmm. want to be bought. No, they wanted me to buy them out, and I go, I, I like having you guys here. And so, you know, like two years mm -hmm. later, they just said, you know, here, a, a very small number, mm -hmm. and the place is yours. And so, I mean, they were fantastic, so we operated oh, nice. that for... And what year was that about? That was 98. Okay, 1998. And then we're there for 10 years, and then the Biltmore was tearing down that side of the mall, and right. moved to the other right. side for another 11 years. And but that was that's one of the Chris Yeah. Well, yeah. What was it called, Christopher? That restaurant that was on the second floor there. The uh, Christopher's Fermier and Paul was oh, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so when it turned into Christopher's Crush, that's where that sexy picture of the well, uh, Christopher's and Crush Lounge. So we kept two was, entities. On yes. the other side of Biltmore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So who was that photo of? Uh, Rumor was it was one of your girlfriends or one of your no, wives. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> Is that not true? <laughs> well, one of them might have been a girlfriend. I couldn't think of it. Her legs. Uh, <laughs> the, it other was just girls, a very, the other two girls I didn't know. It was just a black and white photo yeah, of just this sexy leg yeah, with yeah. her very high heels. Yeah. Uh, so one Maybe was like, with, or something. like Louboutins crushing some yes, grapes. That's yes, a crush, like yes, a wine crush. Yes. Uh, another girl hiding uh, had a bottle of Le Grand Dame behind her. And then. See, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Like, I wasn't there for the photo shoot. I remember the architect goes like, dude, you should have seen them. <laughs> they were naked. <laughs> I'm like, dude, your wife's pregnant. She should be looking. <laughs> They're divorced. Well, I remember <laughs> I go sit down and we'd sit there and drink why. wine looking at this very, and I, I was not jealous. I was like, that's a cool photo, you know. Well, I, I, I love that place, the fair man. Yes. It was a smaller, uh -huh. right? And you had the open kitchen. Very modern. Yeah. And you had seats. Yes. At a bar at the kitchen. Yep, uh, no, well, I, the fermier had a, a slightly open kitchen and glass windows that you could see okay. into the kitchen. Right. That was up, upstairs at the Biltmore. I'm talking about downstairs at the Crush. You're talking downstairs. Crush, that, yeah. that room was yeah. really, Paul yeah. did a lot of the design there. Yeah. That was really a sexy room. And if you want to see it Very again, sexy. Uh, when we sold everything out of the place, 
these guys came in and they bought everything in the lounge, all the furniture, the booths, the bunkheads, the red, you know, it was kind of red, uh, yeah, yeah. velvet and It was leather. like red, black and white. Yeah. And it's, I think at uh, some, <laughs> they refurbished a strip club on the west side. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're ever on the, on the west side of a strip club, I'm not going to say names and you go, like, this looks like Crush Lounge. <laughs> But later on, you have to tell me because I want to yeah. go check it out. That sounds funny. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, what are we going to try here? Oh, the, uh, that's a little. Look, I just grabbed some, some water on loose too. and. Uh, okay, so I might take the top off and take a bite. We'll have yeah. some Chardonnay. Try that. And uh, a little black brioche. Yeah. Like literally, when you called me, I ran into the restaurant because I had a, uh, some appointments going on, and I ran into the restaurant Still and. Uh, and, and uh, and just grabbed a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we should try the Chardonnay, Sam Pillsbury yeah. Chardonnay. That Chardonnay might go well with that. There we yeah. go. Uh, what's better? No, the Chardonnay probably good. I think okay. it will. This, this Chardonnay, for sure, this is not much mm. under most Chardonnays. Wow. You know, some really people good. say yeah. so sweet good. goes with it. Wow. Really wow, that's yeah, you amazing. Drink, uh, you know, Chateau oh my gosh. with this. Uh, yeah. What is in that? That's so good. It's just really one wow. ingredient. That's foie gras. Wow. Wow. So, wow, why is it so good? Because uh, it's $80 a pound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm That's why. Why. <laughs> well, so with all this just brilliance and your passion for food and cooking and, you know, obviously a brilliant mind to, you know, go to the next level, go to the next level. Uh, now you're here at the Wrigley Mansion. Tell us about that restaurant and how that came about. So maybe like uh, 10 years ago or whatever, it's probably even longer. Um, mm. We were going up to the Wrigley all the time and then, uh, you know, with the owner, we said, you know, maybe we can we can help and, you know. Was this Hormel? Yeah. Okay. And it's like. Um, Jordy? Well, uh, Jordy had passed away. Okay. And uh, so, yeah. several years prior. Okay. And, so. Um, so yeah, we said we could we we could help. So it's like our management company came up there just to um, mm. um, trim down a few things and you know focus a little uh, a few things, but not to really you know change the world. And consequently, I didn't go up there much, but my partner went up there uh, to take control because when I went up there, I probably raised my voice a few times, mm. you know, that you shouldn't be doing this. This isn't how you do things. And, and it was always like, well, they're not trying to be this or that, they're not trying to go over the top. So I mostly stayed at uh, at uh, Christopher's and Crush Lounge mm -hmm. uh, until they needed something or there's some problems. And then uh, when our lease was starting to wind down, um, they wanted to up it. The owner wanted to really up it. Miss Hormel wanted to take it to another level. And so- Is that Jamie? Yes. So we, uh, we didn't renew our lease. Uh, we were there 21 years. Thank at, at Crush? At, at, the, at the Biltmore. Biltmore. Wow. Yeah. And the things were changing down there too. So it was, a, it was a good move. And so we went up there and uh, the first thing I think I did was mm -hmm. <clears throat> I remodeled a pastry shop because it was just you know falling apart. Mm -hmm. And then we started making all the bread and doing all the pastry instead of just <clears throat> decorating with pre-made stuff. And then... Um, well, this is at the Wrigley Mansion that is... Right. How do you describe yeah, that? It was, uh, for somebody that's never been there. Historical building, uh, mm -hmm. centrally located with one of the best views in the city. Uh, mm -hmm. They built that, finished it, I think, in 1931 32. They also, the Wrigley's, built uh, the Arizona Biltmore. Mm -hmm. um, he built it for his wife's wedding or wedding anniversary or birthday or something. I should know all of this. Um, but, uh, you know, beautiful building. Uh, there's not too, you know, 1931 is. Mm -hmm not that <clears throat> old if you're in Europe, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, that's a modern structure. It's very structure. European. But it's, uh, you know, it was one of their houses on their way, you know, from Chicago to stop in Arizona because mm -hmm. travel wasn't as quick, you know, and then to stop in Catalina or Pasadena. Uh, there's five houses, I believe. But uh, so we went up there and there was an add-on to the house that I think Western Savings and Loan might have done because it was a venue place for you know weddings and parties and stuff and the add-on was terrible the kitchen was just just so you know my dad would have a piano concert uh, charity concerts oh and he was friends with Jordy, and it was oh, they probably uh, had a blast together it was so much fun and i had to play the piano and the violin 
and my siblings all did and they raised a lot of money and I, I think it's really funny because my dad would get all the nuns from Xavier to come and he'd give them free tickets and I was like yeah I'm gonna get an A <laughs> They got all excited. They all came well, in. I should have done something concerts. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I barely made it. Um, but there's this add-on that they did was just terrible. You know, low ceiling, no ventilation. The kitchen was dreadful. So I asked, "Can I tear down the kitchen?" So I took it down to the ground. It was uh, mm. it was up uh, on a second story on the one side, and there was like a dungeon in the bottom that was just full of you know broken equipment and stuff like that. If you'd woke up there in the morning. Uh, you think you're in a Saw movie about ready to be you know, tortured or something. Um, play a game. Yes, yeah, play. A, and so totally remodeled the kitchen. It's probably the nicest kitchen uh, in Arizona. Uh, really, I like, took the roof off. I went yeah, crazy. I've been there, I would agree. You've been in the kitchen. Many times. So mm -hmm. once finished that, we did the wine cellar. Uh, we did a, there wasn't a way to get down to the wine cellar, so... I, uh, with the contractor, we found an opening that wasn't a retaining wall or a supportive wall, and we went through that. And then we did the bar. And then after all, everything was done, uh, Miss Hormel was wanting to take it to a new level. And uh, uh, so we started, you know, really, you know, working hard on the menus and the wine list. And Paul took the wine list to having the biggest wine list in Arizona. Incredible. And, you know, she's a brilliant mind. Yeah. Um, we didn't get along on service and stuff like that, but uh, is that okay to say she was your? She was my partner. Yeah, partner. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, well, Paul and I were married for ten years, mm -hmm. and then we worked together for twenty years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that's really cool when you can when you have this relationship with somebody and then it ends romantically, but you can still yeah, you don't have to go home with them. So did you yeah. want to put yes. more attention into service or something like well, that? Or did the disagreement I think arise? We had a, I think we had a disagreement on where I wanted to see the, the mm. restaurant go mm -hmm. and and no, being more than average. Right? By restaurant, at this point, you're talking mm -hmm. about the Ridley Rant Mansion restaurant. Jordy's. Jordy's. Yeah, yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to take it more than average. I wanted to take the banquets yeah. more than average. Yeah. And... Uh, but it's a pretty, uh, pretty large space. I mean, yeah. pretty large. How many seats was that? Well, was, I, I think it can seat like 150. Yeah. Banquets can do 250. Yeah. Okay. Then there's yeah. four private. So it's a large dining room. Yeah. A big chunk of my childhood, I we were there with these concerts and these dinners, and uh, mm. and I remember Jordy playing the piano oh, yeah, and he had the missing good. fingers, and he he could just play and play and play. <laughs> it was incredible. I, that's a new one. I'll have to ask. <laughs> yeah, he he just played the piano. How many again. missing fingers? I didn't, maybe it was only one. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're missing <laughs> more than one, I don't know. It might have been one. It might have been one, but it's like as a kid, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to ask my now. Like, how many well, fingers? It might have been have. one finger, but it looked like, as a kid, I was like, oh my God, how does he play with it? I was just staring at his finger, but it's gone. It might have been one. But Jordy, what I know of Jordy, and I'd only met him a couple of times, you know, everyone thought when he came to town, he was the you know, just there to Hormel. And uh, then I found out one day, like, you know, I'm pulling these, whatever you call them, like platinum records, you know, and they're framed and they have the artist mm -hmm. on it. And I'm like, what's this? And uh, Miss Hormel goes like, well, it's the Rolling Stones. And I go, yeah, I can I can see it's the Rolling Stones. And she goes, well, it's goat's head soup. And I go, yeah, I, you know, I'm like thinking about, yeah, I can, I can, but what is this? Why do you have this down in storage? And then there's like 10 or 15 more of them. Because you read a lot of music. And, well, she goes, we recorded it. And I go, mm -hmm. what do you mean you recorded it? We, well, we own the Village Recorder. Oh, my. And, you know, so, you know, pre-COVID, Lady Gaga was recording there. It's still very, very relevant. Mm -hmm. I was at a party for Grammys mm -hmm. for Is that the here technicians. In no, no, it's in California. In California. And, uh, you know, uh, Jack White was the uh, immense of the, what did I say, right? Of the, or, of the, the event. Or all the you know technician guys that do all the mixing mm. and all that stuff, mm. and uh, you know everyone's recorded there. Uh, Pink Floyd, uh, Super Tramp, wow. uh, you name it. And so, I only found, I didn't know that aspect of it. Yeah, and he was so he, my friend Cheryl. And he was uh, so he's you know they had the studio. He's recorded a lot of music. Um, he wrote music, or Hanna Barbera wrote no uh, purchased his music. So a lot of the cartoons that you see, okay. uh, the music is from Jordy Horvath. I can't wow. think. Who's the guy with wow. the long hair that she hired to 
go through all this music to figure uh, it all that, out. That's Mark, uh, and he does studio work and stuff like yes. that. Yes, I met him at I met him at Mountain Shadows. We exchanged numbers, and he's like, "Oh yes, I'm doing. I'm yeah. here." Um, Hermel, yeah. Jamie hired this, me to come through and, and decipher all this music he wrote. And he also does the lighting and, and uh, stuff yes, for uh, yes. Jerry Hormel when she yep. sings jazz up there mm -hmm. like oh, once wow. a month. Bro. And he's a pretty really? big deal. Yeah. Mark is a pretty big deal so in the music industry. So but, uh, just a small world. But Jordy was huge. I mean, he did uh, uh, movie uh, music uh, and he was an artist and uh, he wrote crazy stuff like the he redid the Constitution in words that if I do them verbally, it sounds like what it's supposed to sound like. But if you read it, it's the... It, interesting. It's a, you know, so he was, he was a, a genius, interesting character. So how are the ways that you changed uh, Christopher's at the Wrigley Mansion compared to Jordy's? Oh, that's a good question. Well, Is it when just the menu you, overall? That's a great or question. did you redo well, the decor? Or? So that's... Isn't I'll that a to, new addition, that part? Well, I'll try to okay. speed this one up. So We're not when, in a hurry. So when I did uh, all of that at Shorty's, um, I said, okay, now we got this going. Uh, there's one little thing I'd like to do. There's a triangular piece of land out there. I'd like to build a little greenhouse. And I, I, I guess, guess I understated what I was trying to <laughs> build because it's more greenhouse. than a greenhouse. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jamie uh, goes, yeah, yeah, go ahead and do it. And I think she thought we'd never get a permit. And then we hired the very talented Wendell Burnett. Mm -hmm. uh, as the architect, and I said, I want glass, uh, like a greenhouse, I want a retractable ceiling. He goes, why do you want a retractable ceiling? And I go, there's a restaurant in Paris called Le Serre. It's a very good restaurant. No one ever talks about the food or service, they just talk about the ceiling opens up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if I can get people to talk about just because the ceiling opens up, that, that. that's cool. I love that. Well, hold on. I think it's important for people to know the Wrigley Mansion is as you said, it's from, what, 1930? 31, yeah. Yes. So, like, it's very Art Deco. It's very beautiful. It's timeless. Mm -hmm. You would never have to remodel it. It's Everything's, like, exquisitely done. And then your beautiful addition, isn't it? It's an addition. It's an addition. Mm -hmm. It's very modern. Okay, go it's, ahead. It's, uh, you know, very expensive two walls because uh, yeah. it's a triangle, and one of the walls is the Wrigley Mansion. It's amazing. So, um, uh, Anyway, we, we put the design together, and I had five things in mind for the design. Let's see if there's five. Uh, you know, the Le Serre, the roof that opens up. Uh, cooking on fire, best view centrally located in the city. Largest wine list, we're cooking on fire. I guess there's more. Local art uh, is involved in it. We have Arcasanti that did some of the mm. plate covers, the, yeah, the chimes, yeah. the wind bells by Pablo Solari. Uh, not really local, but they lived here since 89. Uh, Rotrop Klein Morke. Uh, she has her statues at the Botanical Gardens right now. Mm. She's had her paintings at the Phoenix Art Museum, but she's been exhibited all over the world. And she's the widow of Eve Klein, uh, mm. famous for blue. So we have one of her blue paintings in there, the galaxy. We have uh, the pigment of the blue Eve Klein in a mm. hand blown test tube looking thing in the ceiling that you, it's subtle, you're not always going to see it. And then there was an iconic picture of E. Klein because he was sort of a performance artist and they knew I liked this this iconic photograph and so they sent me the digital file that I could reproduce once and I could sign a contract that I wouldn't sell it and it's called A Leap into the Void and it's him jumping out of a second story building in France <laughs> in, a, in a suit and a swan dive. <laughs> and, you know, back then there wasn't Photoshop, so they had to do it supposedly in two shots. One with people catching him in a net, and then the other one with nothing in the scene. And so they superimposed him or something like that. So that's in the restaurant. Uh, we have an Ed Mel in the restaurant. Wow. Our wine coasters are uh, designed by Arcasante with the original Pablo Soleri designs in the, the thing. Um, and so with the, fact, the fact you have this much attention to detail with the art shows that it's really about the experience, the absolutely. whole thing, absolutely. not just the food, not oh, just yes. the not service. That is the things that happened at the table. And this sounds silly, but all the bathroom, little, I remember your bathroom oh, yeah, the, is the, all the glass. Mess bathroom. That's exquisite. <laughs> so, <laughs> does the ceiling open? Yeah. It does? Yeah. I didn't even know that. And all the glass, all the glass opens up. And then when I did the bathroom, we've always had messed up bathrooms or some, there's a little quirky thing like in... Fermier, there was, a, when you walked in, 
you thought you were seeing a reflection of uh, the other person in the other bathroom. Like you'd see, if, if, you, if I walked in the way it was designed, you look in the mirror, there could be a woman on the other side in the women's restroom, <laughs> but you think you're seeing her behind her, or vice versa. So then they saw you, they would scream thinking there's a man in the ladies' bathroom. But it was just Funny. a few gaps in a louvered uh, wall yeah. with glass on yeah. it that gave that illusion. And then the right. other one at Christopher's and Crush Lounge, it was a. Uh, it's very open. It was very it was open. Very open, closed closets, but the mirrors, and it was a trough like sink that when you put your hands there, the water came on. But on the other side, it was the women's bathroom. You could see their so hands. So you touch hands and like, yeah. oh. who's on the other side? Yeah. So this one, when I designed it, I said I want a glass floor to ceiling in the restroom. So it's hanging over the cliff. So if you're sitting there just pondering life, uh, you're looking at the whole city. It's one of the best views in the restaurant, actually. Um, it's the best view in the bathroom. Very cool. It's all glass. Everything is glass. So with all these little So you can see you down below, too. It, um, it was like, I, you know, I'd say them all, like, you know, there's so many little hooks in here, like, you don't need them. Uh, <laughs> the, the restaurant's so unique. And then, like, these drawings are on the plate. Those are cartoons that I draw. Yeah, that's that's yeah. your that was a local, local right. plate manufacturer who does that. Yeah, your uh, Blue Door Ceramics. That's that's rabbit motif. Is, wow, that's uh, cool. Um, you drew that? Yeah. Incidentally, this is wow. August 1st, so it's rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. Is yes, it? it is. Yeah. They're, they're, yes. Really? Yes. Are you teasing? No. I think they're, they're all baby rabbits everywhere, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so we have to call Sam back about the Chardonnay. How oh, many minutes do we have, Chase? So we got about 10. 10 minutes? Okay, so I want to hear uh, Sam's like version the of the Chardonnay we're drinking. I like the Chardonnay. Uh, so why do we not have... Pillsbury at your restaurant. I don't know. We don't. Talk to Chase. Talk to Chase. No, Jason. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Here we go. I'm Switzerland. I played, uh... hey, how are you? Hi, Sam. So we are, we just ate the best foie gras I've ever had. Um, say hi again to Christopher. Hello. Yeah, hi. When are you coming up? Oh, I come up every week. I'm coming up tomorrow, actually. Well, come up and visit. Place. What, at, at, the, at, the, at, at Christopher's the at the Wrigley Mansion. Yeah. I'm going to come with okay. you. <laughs> we, we got a glass of champagne with your name on it. Oh, you're such a sweet I got a magic <laughs> marker. I can do anything. And, and, and Christopher <laughs> wants to have your wine. I don't know which one at Better's Restaurant. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely come if I can make it. I'm just, I'm so slammed now with the harvest coming on and the heat. It's just. Oh, that's it's, right. Uh, but, but anyway. Um, um, Has I the harvest started, Sam? Market. Um, it's got delayed because what happens is the vines go dormant when it yeah, gets this hot. Yeah, yeah. But let's talk about how great your Chardonnay is. Tell yeah. us about the Chardonnay 2022. My, my Chardonnay, well, you, well, you know my philosophy. I don't, I, I, I don't bring any food in. I only make wine from the fruit that I grow organically. We ferment all of our wines with the wild yeast that comes in on the fruit. We never use new oak. Um, all our wines are, are wild yeast fermented to bone dry. Uh, the, the Chardonnay has two Dijon clones, um, picked a little early mm. so it's bright and not, not fat and juicy. Um, it's barrel fermented in stainless steel and neutral oak, and we inhibit malolactic fermentation um, to keep it to keep it from being kind of what I call slutty, you know. So it's it's a white Slutty. Very nice oh, it's slutty. Oh, oh, Christopher likes that. <laughs> <laughs> right, Christopher? <laughs> what what was the word you used? Did you use the word did slutty? You, slutty? Did you say slutty? It doesn't like a slutty yeah. shard. Well, well, when you put, when you put Open, appealing, and always available. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to decant that. That's ready to go. Yeah. E e e e uh, yeah. Uh, obvious, easy to, easy to use. And easy to use. <laughs> <laughs> One glass and they're ready. <laughs> Yeah, I love that he opened the door. <laughs> oh, he's always that way. So, so Sam, if tomorrow doesn't work, uh, let's make this happen because uh, Christopher loves your wines. There we go. I love it. I'm so, I'm, I'm so glad. The last, the last time I, the last time I was, was it Christopher's to receive the award. You had food poisoning, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They paid the hospital bill. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> he was making a joke. Okay. You say you had food poisoning. Yeah, but, but let's just, um, I'd love to come and see you. I will, I will do my best to, to come this weekend, and I will let you know, okay? 
Sounds perfect. Uh, so we love this wine, 2022. Uh, we will fill our cellars with it. Absolutely. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Nice to talk to you guys. Take care. My pleasure. Good to hear from you, Hi, Sam. Sam. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. No, this is, again. Well, you know, one, one thing we like to do at Christopher's is why wine goes so good with everything. We are a high-end restaurant Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The highest end. Uh, and maybe. And then uh, Wednesday and uh, Tuesday were our Bistro's Greatest Hits, so yeah. we're really approachable and affordable. And then we have something going five days a week, our petite plate menu at the chef's table, where you can graze like it's a tapas bar. Not topless, what? Sam, if he's still Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, those girls aren't, or you have to pay. Uh, and uh, you can have just small plates. They range from 10 to $20 each. And uh, you can have wines by the glass. And, and that's what night? Uh, that's every night. Where well, that's why, uh, where is this? At the chef's counter. Uh, okay. Sam's the wines are such a good fit for you because um, he, not only is he a local brand, but he really loves his wine so much. It's like an art form to him. He really cares about the intricacies of the flavors, and you know he puts his heart and soul into it. So, um, if that ends up working out, it would be a great fit for your restaurant. And I don't know if you know, you know, he's a movie director, movie producer, yeah, absolutely, like thirty-five movies, yeah. lived in Malibu, New Zealand, still does, and he he just he's a character. Yeah, he is a character. You should do some wine dinners with to. him. To incorporate like Maybe. having some comedy with him. He's so like, I was just looking at the uh, menu for Christopher's at Wrigley Mansion, and what is your like favorite pairing of starter, main course, dessert? Mm -hmm. What is you the mean chef? wine pairings? Or uh, the, the wine pairing, like what you would you pick for each course, and then what you'd pair, which wine you'd pair with each this course? Oh, the, uh, now you're putting me on the spot. That's, that's um, well, I want to hear what the chef's recommendation would be for when we come in. Well, well this is oh. the classic menu. So on, the, right. on, the, on the classic menu, there's there's you know so many things to go with. Uh, uh, like so, we had the smoked salmon. Uh, Incredible. I like a, a, a Chardonnay. We actually have a, a Chablis that has a really crisp acidity, mm -hmm. uh, low alcohol, and it's really, really fantastic with the smoked salmon. Um, then the, the foie gras, we have, uh, we have some sauternes, we have some bon de venise, uh, we have wonderful things, but I sometimes like with foie gras, if you want to go for, you know, Get a nice Montrachet is, is nice. Montrachet, sure. yeah. white burgundy, dry white burgundy yeah. goes really good. Yeah. Um, then for some of the robust stuff, like uh, I think the, the Liberty Duck, we have, you know, we have some uh, Cote de Rhone, some Syrah, and stuff like yeah. that is really, Perfect. really good. Um, what about the Boye Martineau? The what? What about the Boye he's, Martineau he's, Chardonnay? He knows the wines. He's do you know that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you, do you have that there? I don't, I think, we're, are we doing it by the glass or? or? Well, not yet. Okay. But I'm going to talk no. to Jason. Oh, oh, Take fine. that knife out of my uh, back. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to talk to Jason. No, I'm talking to Jason. I thought you had it there. I thought you soon. had it there. Not yet. No. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, uh, okay. but that's, that's our Wait, classic. the wines menu. are there, but, but the by the glass program is not Oh, okay. Active the wines are there. Somebody can get it by the bottle, but not oh, yeah. by the glass. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, see, there I know a little bit, but not too much. November. So we have five minutes left. What is on your bucket list? What do you want to make happen? You've done so much. Like, it's unreal what you've done and what you've accomplished and how you've really made people happy because food makes people happy. Well, our, our biggest thing, so the, the biggest difference for this restaurant when I got mm -hmm. to build exactly what I wanted um, mm -hmm. is to mentor young people. So oh. we don't do something like uh, most restaurants. We don't have a back the house, front of the house, per mm -hmm. se. We try to train everyone so they're well-rounded so that I have one cook who just went to another job a, a great job mm -hmm. um, he started out as a, a, a line cook he mm -hmm. became a great server a great mixologist the baker so mm -hmm. all of our people are most of them are cross trained and uh, they all share in the, the gratuity mm -hmm. so uh, uh, I wanted them are to, you hiring uh, yeah I think we are looking for some so oh my god i'll work there for free you can come in anytime you want <laughs> i'm not kidding i don't need the money i'll just work <laughs> i will look to learn you how to be cook like that oh my gosh uh, i would love to I'll but i wanted tomorrow. the cooks to know more than just throwing the plate in the past and right. then no, this you is, know i'm uh -huh. done with it i think i want them to know yeah. how to serve it so when they go in to open their own restaurant as a chef now they know the front of the house they know the wines they know the mixology 
uh, to make cocktails and stuff, and they know the complete service industry thing that they should it. know instead of only 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 yeah. knowing half of it. Well, it's so true because if you once again, if you want to be an accomplished have restaurant a restaurant tour. tour, you need to know every aspect of that restaurant. Yeah, instead of like relying so on like I think you know your job to run the other half of my business and. They might not, and, and you the might not. That I, the other restaurant tours that I know, they like to get something from scratch, so they learn their ways. Yeah. So that's smart. Yeah. I so mean, you, you look at someone like Mark Torvell, for example. He knows the front, he knows the back, he he's knows great. every aspect. Yeah. Of it. We love him. That's why he's successful. Yeah. He's successful. But a lot of cooks go out and this. I think this is where the restaurant industry yeah. is heading. Hopefully. Well, you but have really, a lot of cooks that open restaurants and they yeah. fail. Yeah. But what you have here at Wrigley Mansion, that's worldwide the best. I mean, really, it's not just Arizona the best. I mean, to have that mansion views everywhere, it's, you know, you're just, well, everything, iconic. every aspect is iconic, it is iconic. and it, it, it's art. And the fact that art. you've taken that iconic mm -hmm. place and added something it's so original to it. Because to take the, the is, 1930s really uh, mansion that's like perfect in its way, and to add this like modern little oh, attachment, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Window did the brilliance of what it looks like. He did sight lines so it disappears mm -hmm. from the mansion. Oh, and then a yeah. term that I didn't That's know right. what did, didn't know what it meant. Uh, the Venice Accord. And I go, what's that? And he goes, mm. well, you know, this wasn't here before, like the pyramid at the Louvre. Right. You, you know that yeah, right, that wasn't, right. wasn't there. But he did it in such mm -hmm. a way that he did sight lines from down it's below true. to make sure that the Wrigley is respected, the mansion's respected. That's oh, so respected. Yeah, if you're driving anywhere mm -hmm. and you try to look up on the hill and see that restaurant, yeah. you don't. No. To be honest with you, when I heard about the attachment... It's really a CIA torture camp. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, <laughs> yeah. In the very beginning, I was like, mm, I don't know if that, it looks exquisite. Yeah. It is unmatched. It's unparalleled. It's, it's a work of art. And I can't wait to go there next. No. Can I go there tonight? Yeah, I will. Uh, tonight we're. They're both. I'm gonna be running. But there. we're squeezing me in. I'll work in the kitchen. You can you can come work in the kitchen. We might need help. I'll come work in the kitchen. He said that they're more booked tonight than I've ever been. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's a busy night. Tonight. Yeah, like 36 people. Just, yeah. So we're small. First. We're only like 32 seats. Yeah. And tonight it's 36. Yeah. What's wow. uh, how many sir, how many uh, services they usually do in the evening? We, we, no, we don't. We don't, we let you come in kind of when you want. Yeah. I mean, if that time period is too booked, uh, yeah. then you have to. Take they give you a, six, like when you book it. It's or, like this to this. It's like a two-hour. But we don't do seatings. We right. want you to come in when you want to come in. Yeah. Uh, it's great. We're very service oriented. Yeah. It's all about even hospitality. For the, even for I mean, we're here week. for you. We're yeah. you're not here for. Oh, us. Er everybody's just serving it. It's just incredible. Yeah. Like it's like unmatched. Yeah. I haven't seen anything like it yeah. anywhere else. Yeah. Like no other restaurant in Arizona oh, can ever Very come fun. close to it. It's true. I can Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Sam Pilsner. What it is the you. last Thank restaurant? No. Nope. Uh, yes. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Crazy Red Rose, we love you. Uh, what do you want? To, what you didn't say? What's your bucket list? Oh my. Just What's next? Keep, keep, there's <laughs> What's nothing next. next. No, nothing next. This is uh, the, this is, the this culmination. Is the, this is the restaurant that uh, dreamed of forever, probably. Yeah. I mean, it can't get any better. It can't yeah. get any better. That's nope. so cool. Okay. All right. I agree with that. Can't get any better. So uh, thank you so much, everybody. We're saving the planet. One, one show, show at a time. time. Or as I like to say, one wine at a time. Saving the planet one meal at a time. Meal Eat local. Time, go yes. to Christopher's at the Wrigley Mansion. Yeah.